Welcome back to the stock portfolio update videos. Currently, my two stock portfolio is set at a combined value of over 58,000 Australian dollars. This is made up of the 23,091 USD, which is the equivalent of just over 35,000 AUD, and the 22,727 AUD in my Vanguard portfolio. First, we'll go through my stake portfolio, which is now up 27% or closing in on 5,000 USD in total. Overall, not much has changed in my positions, but I will be putting in some extra money next week as I hopefully grow this portfolio closer to the goal of 25,000. Going through, my biggest positions are still Apple, Microsoft, and VOO, but I am looking to add into some of my other positions and maybe even sell out in some. Sitting down this morning, I was having a look through my portfolio and deciding what I wanted to do. My goal was to be a bit more slow and hopefully not sell out and buy into as many different positions this year as I have previously and keep a bit more of a consistent portfolio. This has meant that a lot of my staples that are even having downtimes, such as Apple, I'm sticking in for the long term and potentially even looking to add if it does drop off even lower. Apple was at one point my biggest holding by a decent chunk, but that is long gone now as Microsoft stock has soared and is now nearly $1,000 worth more than my Apple position. Overall, it's still not had a bad year, up 23%, but when compared to the other tech giants and my other investments, the return has not been that good. The last three months of Apple have been rough as well, down over 5%, but I'm consistently holding on to this position and making the decision on what I'm going to do. I don't see the position going anywhere, and I think Apple will remain dominant in all its markets, so I plan on keeping investing and maybe even adding, like I said, if the price continues to drop. Secondly, is my extremely small Amazon position, which is now up 33%. If you've been watching these videos for a while, I've had this position for a long time, and I never knew quite what to do with it. I sold out at points, and I only had a small amount left, which I decided just to hold on to. And in the last year alone, it's up nearly 93%. This is something I look back at myself and kick myself for not investing when it dipped down here. This is the same with when I had my meta position and even Google at some points but I still haven't decided what I want to do with this, as even with such great returns of 33%, it's only worth up $19 because my equity is only $75 worth, so it doesn't really make much of a change for my portfolio. My next position is in Costco, which is up over 51% now, and it's been an amazing investment for me. The stock is closing up on $750 a share, and a few of my videos ago, I was saying, if the stock gets to around $550 and drops, I'll hopefully be investing more. But those prices are long gone. The stock has shot up in the last recent three months, closing in on nearly 30%. As you can see with my average share price of $494 a share. My total equity is around 1,500, making it one of my biggest positions in my portfolio. Next is Google, which has been going in the news a lot over its recent AI issues of its new Gemini release. I actually invested into Google recently as it was the cheapest of Nifsen 7 and I wanted to invest a bit of money into my tech stocks. As you can see, it's not been ideal, but when you go back and you look at the overall year, it's still up nearly 50%. My position is now down and I have around $1,150 in equity. I was up around 10%, but with the recent downturn, it has really affected my position in Google. I'm not 100% seeing this as a negative, as I still believe Google has the infrastructure with their cloud, with their search and ads to hopefully turn this around. And if the stock does continue to dip, I think it'd be a great time to buy in and hopefully learn on my mistakes that I made previously with Meta. Again, like I was saying with Amazon, if I had a bit more hindsight and I could invest a bit more money back here where the stocks were dropping, it would have been great for my returns. But all I can do now is focus on what I'm going to do going forward. And what I think I'll do is I'll keep my eye on this price. And if it does drop even lower, I think I might be investing extra money into Google as a long term play. The next position is JP Morgan. And this is a position that I might even look at selling out of some of it. It's been a great investment for me up nearly 31% and my average share price is around $140 as the stock now trades at 185. It's had a strong year, up 31%, and 
and the reason I invested in JP Morgan was to hedge away from my tech positions and get a bit more diversification in my portfolio. I decided on JP Morgan when assessing all the banks I'd previously invested in other banks such as Citi and Goldman Sachs, but decided JP Morgan was the one I wanted to hold on to. It's been a good decision and the stock has served me well with my total equity around 1,541. But with its recent run up in the last three months of 17%, I don't think I'd mind locking in some gains and maybe investing that money elsewhere where I could maybe get outsized returns. I don't want to sell my whole position just yet, but with its recent run up, I don't think there'll be any harm done in taking some gains. I'll make a decision on that in hopefully my next video and decide where I want to put those extra funds. McDonald's was a play of mine that I did around a few months ago and I decided to invest in it when it had this drop. As you can see, my average share price is 256. So I was buying the dip and I managed to ride it all the way up and get a really good return over such a short period of time. Since then, and in the last recent months, the stock has traded pretty much sideways. So I'm still thinking about what I wanna do with this position, whether I wanna hold it long-term or whether I should just lock in my gains from that short investment. I have only around $816 in equity, but it's up 13% in my 2.8 shares. So this has been a good investment that I wouldn't mind holding long term as I don't see McDonald's going anywhere as a stock, but I do think you can potentially get better returns elsewhere. Last is my biggest individual holding by a landslide, and that's Microsoft. Microsoft seems to be firing on all cylinders, especially when you compare it to how Apple's been um, and Google's recent downturn. I'm so happy that Microsoft is my biggest position as I believe them and Costco have some of the best business models in the whole world. It's up around 12.5% in the last three months, and in the last year alone, it's up 65%. I'm up 53% as I've consistently dollar cost averaged in and bought bigger and bigger chunks as this has gone on. I own around 9.5 shares now, and my total equity is closing in on $4,000. With this being my biggest position, I still don't see myself selling out of it anytime soon. I don't see my, anything with Microsoft saying that it's a position I have to get out of, I see them making good moves in AI, I see their core business still being strong, and there's still being growth and upside in Microsoft. So I plan on staying in it for the long term at the moment. Going through my last and my by far biggest position is VOO. I opened this position when I began to, like I said, diversify and hedge away from my individual holdings. I had an extremely tech focused position and I wanted to diversify and get into the S&P 500. Looking through this position, it's sitting at around $470 a share now, and my average share price is around 390. It had been lower, but like with Microsoft, I was dollar cost averaging my way in, and it's slowly been getting higher and higher as I'm buying more shares. This is again a long-term play. As investing in the broader market, I believe this will go up, and hopefully I can use these funds one day to potentially purchase a property or go towards my retirement. It's almost at $11,000 in total equity, and I'm up around 20%, which again, isn't the best gains, but it has taught me a lot investing in this and investing in the overall market as I've ridden the up and downs of the stock market in the recent years. Going through my Vanguard portfolio, this is a portfolio where I've allocated the majority of my funds over the last year, and I've focused on growing this positions. I only own two stocks in this currently. They are both ETFs and one tracks Australia's large company index, which is the 20 biggest companies here in Australia and the other one tracks the international shares, so I can get exposure from both markets. First, looking through VLC, you can see it's had around an 8.47% return in the last year, which again, isn't amazing when you compare it to my stake positions, but it is still an average return, and I do get a decent dividend um, from this position. The main companies that it holds is the likes of the big four banks and the mining giants, and the biggest companies here in Australia. My other position, VGS, has had a much better year, up 25%, and also pays its dividend quarterly. Whilst not as big as the VLC one, they're still nice to get. This holds the biggest companies and many of the positions I already own in my other stake portfolio, such as Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, Meta, and Costco. Overall, I think I'll slowly keep building this portfolio, and hopefully one day, this will reach $30,000 as that was my goal before the end of the year. What this will mean is bigger dividend payments, hopefully more growth, 
And then like with my stake positions, I can hopefully use these funds one day to go towards something else. Going through the actual news that's happened this week, I did touch on it shortly with Google, and we're gonna go through their recent failure of their Gemini launch. If you've been keeping your eyes on tech news, you would have seen their recent letter put out by the Google CEO to the AI team speaking about its unacceptable blunder. Google CEO Sundar Pichai said in a memo that the company is working around the clock to fix its artificial intelligence image generator tool. Pichai also said the company is launching new processes for its AI product launches. Reading through the message, in the memo, Tuesday evening, Google CEO Sundar Pichai addressed the company's artificial intelligence mistakes, which leads to Google taking its Gemini image generation features offline for further testing. Pichai called the issues problematic and he said they have offended our users and shown bias. According to the memo viewed by CNBC, the news was reported by Semaphore. Google introduced the image generator earlier this month through Gemini, the company's main group of AI models. The tool allowed users to prompt to create the AI and over the past week users discovered historical inaccuracies that went viral online and the company pulled the feature last week saying it would relaunch in the upcoming weeks. I know that its responses have been offended some of our users and shown bias. To be clear, this is completely unacceptable and we got it wrong, Pichai said. No AI is perfect, especially by this emerging state in the industry's development. But we, are known the ba we know the bar is high for us. The news follows Google's changing its name from the chatbot to Bard to Gemini earlier this month. Pichai's memo said the teams have been working around the clock to address these issues and the company will instate a clear set of actions and structural changes as well as an improved launch process. We've always thought of ourselves to give users helpful, accurate and unbiased information on our products, Pichai wrote in the memo, and that's why people trust them. This has to be our approach for all our products, including our emerging AI products. And here's the complete memo. I want to address the recent issues in the problematic text and image responses in the Gemini app, firmly barred. I know this is some responses have offended our users and shown bias. To be clear, that's completely unacceptable and we got it wrong. Our teams have been working around the clock to address these issues. We're already seeing substantial improvement on a wide range of prompts. No AI is perfect, especially at this emerging state of the industry's development. But we do know the bar is high for us and we will keep at it however long it takes and we will review what happened to make sure we fix at scale. Google is right, the bar is high for them due to their dominance. I believe they have a 90 something percent dominance in the search market. And a company like this, when you're holding such a big market share, realistically the only way it can move is down. And with Google being such a strong stable company, people do expect better of it, especially when you compare it to the likes of OpenAI and their ChatGPT, which has seen great success recently. Another important thing I wanted to mention that he said in here is we'll be driving a clear set of actions, including structural changes. Typically what structural changes is nice for is layoffs and people being moved. They'll have to move people on and make major changes to their teams as this has clearly been a big problem for them. And as an investor myself, although it's a very small position, it is something I'd like to see and kind of get them back on track. Because when I compare it to my other positions and where else I could invest my money, you sometimes just don't want the unnecessary drama or extras that have come with Google over the recent times. Like I said, this reminds me a lot of when I was investing in Meta a few years ago. Meta had a big problem around investing in their virtual reality, and then Mark Zuckerberg made an executive decision to cut back and focus on more profitability, and that saw great returns for the Meta investors. Hopefully something like this can happen for Google, and things can turn around, but like I said, it's not had the same effect that will happen in Meta. It's still up nearly 50% in the last year, and I still have strong hope in Google that it can make these changes in the long run. But I'll keep monitoring this and provide updates as the situation unfolds and maybe changes are made. The last thing I wanted to go through was my stake, was my overall stock positions and both my American and Australian portfolio and keep showing you how they're tracking over the past couple years. As you can see, my American portfolio is heavily weighted to my ETF, which is what I wanted as VOO will hopefully take up 50% of my portfolio to keep me nice and diversified whilst I still have my individual exposure to these individual stocks that I believe can hopefully outperform the market. My Australian portfolio, I will hopefully get to 50-50 and it will give me a nice split of both markets. Looking through the performance of both of them, you can see it's been a long steady upturn and the only downturn back in January was when I sold out at a point. 
But you can see, this is exactly what you want in my graph. As I'm slowly investing money, my money is compounding and I'm reinvesting all dividends and other payments. Hopefully one day I can get these positions, like I said, to hopefully $30,000 each, and then they can hopefully make a bigger impact in my personal life in terms of going for my next investment or even using this money one day to pay for other expenses. I'll keep tracking it month on month and keep documenting it on here. If I have any big changes, if I sell out or whatever I decide to do. But today was just a quick update on how my portfolios are sitting as they both have combined now at over $58,000 and I get closer to that $60,000 mark. And I just wanted to quickly go through the recent Gemini and Google controversy. Thank you.